Lagos, a city-state, is Nigeria's economic, industrial and commercial capital, as well as the most urbanized cosmopolitan city in West Africa and the hub of financial activities in Africa. Located on 67 stroke 71 Broad Street in Marina, a high-profile street hosting the prime financial, investment and other corporate concerns that constitute the world-famous Lagos Central Business District, the Bank of Industry Skyscraper had a checkered history of five earlier fire incidents since its construction in 1972. For 18 months, the partially damaged structure posed a grave danger to life and property, while also bringing to a halt activities in the adjoining structures and businesses. Above all, it hindered the vision of the state government for its aggressive urban regeneration program, especially the then ongoing work on Broad Street and its environs. There is a road project here that has not been completed for the last two years because of issues of safety. So we expect that some of our regeneration will take place uh, immediately this is done because of the safety implications that it will engender after a successful uh, implosion. With obvious inherent dangers posed by the state of the building, and after all entities to both the federal government and the management of the Bank of Industry had yielded no fruitful reaction, the governor had no other option than to exercise the powers conferred on him under Section 28 of the Land Use Act by acquiring the property along 67 stroke 71 Broad Street within which the BOI building was located. The task of bringing down the building which was then the tallest building on Broad Street, was given to Rekas Dismantling Limited of South Africa, working in conjunction with high-tech engineering company Nigeria Limited. It was up to explosive engineers Bob Daphne and Mike Perkins of Rekas and their colleague from high-tech Nigeria to bring down the booby death trap without loss of lives and property. It is the first time we've had to do a structure that's as unstable as this. Um, from day one. I mean, obviously, when we started the work inside, we were obviously very nervous. They resorted to unconventional methods for an unconventional building. Unable to pre-weaken most of the building, especially the concrete core, Bob and Mike used three times more the number of explosives, 1,155 pounds in all, to ensure that the building came down. More explosives means bigger air blast, which means shockwaves coming off the explosion could shatter nearby glasses. This was obviously bad news for the adjoining African Church Bethel Cathedral. To protect the church building, Geo Textile, a protective fabric, was employed. We put a lot of protection work up there. We've we use shutter boards and geotextile fabrics and everything else. The fabric may weaken the flying debris patch and diminish air blast but can't prevent another huge concern that the rear wall of the building will cave back and destroy the church. When a structure is being toppled, gravity will create forces that will rotate the structure as it loses form as the structure's top section moves forward its base will move backwards. To stop this from happening on the blast, Bob and Mike installed steel leg beams as a hinge and fixed them to the back of the BOI building. It'll keep this section pretty rigid. They also tied the outer to the interior of the building with steel cables on the 8th and the 14th floors. We're just trying to get as much momentum forward so nothing can drop back towards the church. That's the main issue. In addition to previous intense public enlightenment on the planned controlled demolition three days before the exercise, characteristic of a true and responsive leader, the governor had made a radio and television broadcast sensitizing the people about the impending exercise and forewarning that a series of choreographed explosions were in the offing to implode the BOI building. Adding that evacuation drills had already been carried out with local residents, fire and safety service, the ambulance service and security agencies in the preceding weeks. On Sunday, September 21, 2008, 
After several months of painstaking preparations, the team was set for the final touch. Bob, Mike and other members of the demolition crew were set for the historic event, the first ever controlled demolition in West Africa. I'm feeling uh, like I normally feel, nervous, thinking about what you've missed, the unknowns that could happen. This has been a landmark for the last three years. It's going to be a big landmark that's going to disappear this morning. This is an extremely important project for the city. Now there is a new opportunity for the government to properly utilize this uh, city center. And celebrating the era of change, Governor Babatunde Fashola has arrived to witness the event. A large audience of prominent Lagosians, traditional rulers and elder statesmen turned up to watch the exercise from a very safe distance. Mike and Bob had instructed the crew and security men to confirm that all nearby buildings had been evacuated. We've got to make sure that there's nobody in any of these buildings. Everybody's evacuated. That's the most important thing. The security crew continued their final sweep of the vicinity to ensure there was no one within the exclusion zone. We are continuing to check out all the road barriers to ensure that there's no illegal persons inside the exclusion zone. Just moments away from go time, the countdown was screeched to a nerve-wracking halt. The security team suspected there were people inside the church building. Over half a ton of explosives were wired and ready to blow. All eyes were on Bob and Mike. With human lives at stake, they must rush to Claire. We're just going to check the building site. Mike says there's some people still in there. We had to remove some people, we had to request them to leave. After that, I think everything will be in place. With the area now locked down, All clear. Bob wired up the detonator and Mike started the countdown. This was greeted with thunderous cheers and applause. But the blasters had to run from a choking dust cloud. They needed to wait for the dust to clear in order to confirm that the building fell on target. Very good, very good. There's no problem. Everything is in place. Everything is in place. I'll be very grateful to the number one citizen of this country, President Yadua, for approving at last the building be demolished. And I think about five or six days ago, the president, in his wisdom, approved that our governor should go ahead and carry out what he wanted to do about the building. It is not just the history of West Africa, uh, it's in the history of Africa. Because uh, controlled demolition, I can't remember, I don't know where it's taking place in any part of Africa and most parts of the world. This is a job that has been carried on by Nigeria's library with the leadership of the international contractors that we, that we hire. Students have participated in this, Nigerian engineers have participated in this, they've been involved from day one to the end. And uh, what we have achieved today shows again the essence of planning, preparation, meticulous detail to attention. And uh, I believe clearly that when plans are properly articulated, the margin for error reduces. Today, the singular act of responsiveness demonstrated by the Babatunde Rajifashala administration about seven years ago has gone down in the history of governance in Lagos as very outstanding. Indeed, apart from the central business district, which for decades had given the state its famous skyline, the Fashala administration now has to its credit 
the rapid development of a new skyline at the eastern flank of the state with the Leki Ikoi Ling Bridge, the Leki Etiosa Ekbe Expressway, the Leki Free Zone, and the international hospitality brands now in that access. Same goes for other parts of the state. Thank you.